If you are a Tesla owner or Tesla fanboy, you will say this concept doesn't make any sense. But please watch this video until the end, because this can really be the future of electric cars for the mass. Obers is an Austrian company based in Lustenau, very close to Germany and Switzerland. And they have developed a unique and environmental friendly concept for electric cars. And they have demonstrated their technology within a Tesla Model 3. This should not be an offense to Tesla owners, but it should show how we could make cheaper, more sustainable and better electric cars in the future. Oberst has a strong background in engineering and also worked on several concepts for compressors and battery technology. And with the new hyperhybrid concept, they redesigned electric cars from the scratch. So here is the Oberst Mark II. Now let's face it, an electric car nowadays is more a prestige object instead of a sustainable vehicle and the prices for them are already in the premium range. With the hyperhybrid concept from Oberst, they want to achieve affordable electric cars that could bring down the costs to as low as 20,000 euros and also offer a way better range. In theory, the Oberst Mark II, which is based on the Tesla Model 3, is a hybrid car. But the difference to conventional hybrid cars is that the rechargeable battery can be charged by plugging it into a power source or during driving with the combustion engine taking the role of the primary power source to reduce the battery. The Oberst Mark II has a way smaller battery than the Tesla, but that's good. The battery is enough for around 60 to 80 kilometers of pure electrical range, but it is constantly recharging the battery with the high efficiency engine and generator in the front of the car. Oberst had to make a few optical modifications to the car and also change the front for additional air intakes for the engine, but I think it looks pretty good. The engine is very small as it's a two-cylinder engine and the difference to a regular gasoline engine is really huge. It's not yet completely emission-free, but the small two-cylinder petrol engine, which works as a generator under the bonnet, always runs, if it runs, in the optimal RPM range and always with a perfect air-fuel ratio. That means the efficiency is as high as 40%, which is really good for a conventional fuel engine, and also doesn't emit a lot of pollutants. And on average, consumes only about 2 liters of petrol per 100 kilometers. That's really crazy. With the 30 liter tank in the back, this results in around 1000 kilometers of range, which is crazy for a Tesla Model 3. The tank is hidden in the back of the car, under the boot, and it's separated from the rest of the car for safety reasons. You can refuel the Tesla from the feed pipe that is hidden behind the car's backlight, which is a really cool way to keep the design of the car. The regular charging port remains the same on the Model 3. The smaller battery is a huge advantage, even though it sounds like a disadvantage first. A small battery means less cost in production and also less weight for the car. The Oberst Mark II is therefore 285 kg lighter than the Model 3 and this means also that the electrical motors don't need to push that much weight. For demonstration reasons to simulate a budget electric car, the motors on the Oberst Mark II are locked to 120 kW. But Oberst can also make the hyper-hybrid concept work in high-performance cars with up to 450 kW and all-wheel driven models. The generator jumps in when the car is driving at speeds over 65 km per hour, not to direct additional forces onto the drive axle, but to gently recharge the battery. This is as well a huge advantage for the battery life. What all today's battery are least capable of is being fully charged and completely discharged. After maybe 500 charging circles, the battery therefore only has a capacity of 80%. That's why most electric cars require a battery change after a high kilometer count. 
but with the concept Obris is showing there, the battery is always recharged a little in between, and with this the chemistry inside of the battery can convert 10 times more energy. On the paper this sounds fantastic, but how does it feel in reality? I took the Obris Mark II for a ride and I was so amazed by this technology that I didn't even realize that the engine was already running after driving for 10 minutes. But how do they achieve this? Well, it's not a regular engine, even though the whole engine is built from less complex parts than a normal fuel engine. Their engine consists out of two cylinders with 999 ccm in total and with 40 kW of electric power as baseline, but it can go up to 85 kW electrical for the high performance version. There are two rotating twin crankshafts which are used for optimized mass balancing that can reduce the engine's vibration and forces to almost zero. Oberst even demonstrated it to me by putting a coin on the valve cap and they started the engine. There is no vibration and the coin still remained in the same position. That's pretty impressive. I didn't feel any vibration on the steering wheel when the engine was on and I almost didn't hear it. Just the graphs on the display of the Model 3 showed me when the engine was running and recharging the battery. When the engine is running, the smart algorithm splits the power from the generator to supply the electrical motors, send around 1 kW to the air condition and the rest is used to recharge the battery. Depending on how fast you drive, the engine cranks up its RPM and then all of the generators are producing more electrical power. But even at high speeds on the highway, the engine is barely hearable. And on top of all that, they can also modify the engine to work with ethanol, LNG, CNG or biofuel, which would reduce the emissions even more. Using ethanol or other biofuels is seen as a way to avoid carbon emissions. Due to photosynthesis, this fuel doesn't worsen the glasshouse effect. It just returns to the atmosphere the carbon that the plants extracted from it. But where is the exhaust? Well, since the engine is not operating when the vehicle is not moving like parking, traffic jams, etc., the exhaust does not have to be routed to the rear of the car. It ends directly under the front of the dash, outside of the cabin. The heat exchanges are in the front end, left and right bottom. And once again, you really almost don't hear the muffler when the engine is running. And that's really impressive. So Oberst has shown us how a smarter electric car could look like that also could have a way smaller CO2 backpack than those so-called green electric cars which are on the market right now. Since Oberst has a lot of knowledge on the battery side, they have also developed a really smart and efficient battery concept that I want to talk about in the next videos. There is so much more to say about this concept and the company that we need to split all the information in various videos. Just let me know down below in the comments in which part you are most interested in. And now, a quick interview with Frank Wolf from Oberst to answer some of your questions. Hey guys, so we're now here today at Oberst with Frank Wolf and it's a pleasure to be here. So Frank, could you quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, as you said, my name is Frank Wolf. I'm uh, responsible globally for the sales and marketing of our new hyperhybrid uh, concept, which we are to presenting today uh, to you guys. All right, so the first question, what are basically the key benefits of the um, hyperhybrid system over a conventional electric car? The system which we have developed here is made to be an affordable system for the masses around the globe. And we have, of course, a, a big target that is to get to zero emissions at some moment in time. For the moment, we still have a fuel consumption of two liter per hundred kilometer and seven kilowatt hours in real world. Uh, life uh, consumption, but we think this is already a big achievement and so we have built up demonstrator cars and we're sitting here right now in the model uh, to showcase how, middle, how little powertrain is needed in order to have a very nice uh, powertrain uh, with a very good propulsion system so that we can have a really nice uh, driving uh, capabilities of the vehicle. So this looks like a real high-tech concept, but why would it or could it be cheaper than a normal electric car? Okay, we save a lot of weight compared to a pure battery electric car because we only use a small battery, which you can see behind us. This battery here for entry-level car has about 17.3 kilowatt hours and is responsible for driving the car at low speeds 
and doing the whole vehicle dynamics. We do this out of the battery together with the electrical motor you see here back in the rear. So this is the lower end driving in the city and all the acceleration we do as an electric car, but with a small battery. So Frank, what is this tiny thing here in the front of the car? This is our high efficient power plant. So what you have to see when we drive uh, at faster speeds, let's say above 65 kilometers per hour, and when the charge of battery has dropped to about uh, 50 percent, then we switch on the power plant. And this engine does either not operate or it operates with more than 40 percent efficiency. So we can operate this engine along a sweet line from 65 kilometers per hour to 130 or 140 kilometers per hour, but always very, with a very high efficiency. And as an overall concept, we take the best out of both worlds. That means the best from the combustion uh, engine world and the best out of the battery world. And this makes this whole thing affordable and uh, low emissions in the end of the day. So I just saw um, the battery in the back of the car. It's way smaller than in some other um, electric cars on the market. Um, does this now mean there are less resources used and it's more envi environmental friendly? Yeah, a big problem today still in the battery production is the the batteries cause a lot of waste during the production, but also they have a very big CO2 emissions per kilowatt hour. So they, these electric cars bring, uh, when they come to the market, already a, a brick um, CO2 backpack with them. And when we have a smaller battery here, then the backpack is smaller. So it's really a target also to, to live with the smallest possible battery for CO2 emission reasons in the production, but also for cost. Now, what you have to see on the other side with the uh, little power plant here, which we have is really we want to use this power plant only to help the battery, okay? And this uh, power plant which we have here is a highly efficient little combustion engine, a power plant running with more than 40% efficiency. And yes, we have CO2 emissions if we drive today with gasoline. However, the total vehicle operates with two liter fuel consumption per 100 kilometer in real life. That's not uh, NADC or something like that. That's really family budget. And we have energy consumption on top of that of seven kilowatt hours. And that together in the production and in the operation of the car gives us the lowest CO2 emissions over lifetime. Stefan, you've just finished a test drive in our uh, remodeled Mark II car, which is uh, basically uh, was a Model 3 Tesla car. We took out the battery. We have put this little power plant inside the little battery and we kept the electrical motor. What impressions did you have during the highway drive and the drive through the mountains here in Switzerland? So that's actually a funny story because I was sitting in the car and I was always waiting for the engine to kick in. But actually we drove for 10 minutes and we were talking all the time so I didn't pay attention. But then, um, yeah, your colleague told me that the engine is already running and I was like, I didn't feel anything. Now I expected that you will probably um, feel some vibration on the steering wheel during driving because when the engine um, yeah, kicks in like on the start, uh, start and go system from other cars. But actually I, I didn't feel anything. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I just noticed that you can hear it a little bit but you really have to pay attention because I think actually um, the sound coming from the wheels, from the wind, it's, it's definitely more than actually what's coming from the engine. Now regarding the driving experience, um, it didn't feel a lot different to a Tesla or any other electric car so actually it felt pretty good and I didn't really realize that the engine is running and reducing the battery so I think that's a pretty cool concept. Thanks, yeah, this, this is a special point for this engine. We made this engine in a way that it has zero vibrations because in an electric car, by definition, you have no uh, combustion vibrations. Mm -hmm. And so here we have eliminated all the forces and moments uh, of the first and second order, as we call them here in engineering. So no more vibrations. And also we have no uh, start-stop moment from the engine to the outside. Technically, you can hang this thing on an orange cable, start it, stop it, will not move. So this is how we get electrification done, affordable for yeah, all the first time buyers in the world in the next 10, 15 years. So Frank, I'm thinking about buying an electric car. I don't want to name the brand yet, but um, I'm a little bit scared about um, the range, especially in winter. So how are you challenging that topic? I mean, this solution is without range anxiety because we have a 30 liter fuel tank. You know, as I said earlier, we have a fuel consumption in the real world of two liter per 100 kilometer and seven kilowatt hours. So if you charge once or twice uh, the battery every two days, 
you can drive with the 30 liter tank 1500 kilometers okay if you decide to go straight uh, back to vienna where you coming from uh, today uh, then you can go with this fuel tank uh, 800 kilometers without refueling and if you have to refuel you do that in five minutes not in 40 or something like that all right that's pretty cool guys um, you can find more information down below in the description and frank big thanks for the interview pleasure Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. And now just very, very quickly my personal opinion about this whole concept. Now, well, most of you guys will now comment down below. Um, this doesn't make sense why you put um, a regular engine into an electric car. It doesn't make it an electric car anymore. But this is absolutely not true. So I'm personally thinking about actually considering it. No, actually, I'm just about to buy a Tesla Model 3 this week because I think it's a very interesting car. I can make lots of content for it. Um, it's environmental friendly in some reason and also um, it has a lot of tax benefits. So it's actually a really cool car. But I'm really a little bit scared about the range, especially for the base model in winter. What if I have to go to a business meeting like I'm driving to Obrist one day? I cannot use the Tesla, I can use it but it takes a lot of time. But then I would just go to my mom and borrow her car and then just waste a lot of fuel again. Now talking about fuel, it just needs 2 liters per 100 kilometers. Now you will say um, this is still not environmental friendly, but actually that's not true. It's consuming, first of all, way less than other cars right now on the market than conventional cars. So this is almost nothing, two liters per hundred kilometers. And this is the point about now, but think about the future. Now when we're talking about biofuels, they are right now expensive because they are only produced in very um, small quantities. There are no regulations pushing them to make biofuels and stop using what we pump out of the earth. And well, um, that makes those fuels expensive. And this is why you need a technology, car technology actually, engine technology, where you don't rely on a lot of fuels so that you can actually use the biofuels, which are very expensive. Now, also if um, the fuel is way more expensive than regular fuel, just think about it, two liters per hundred kilometers. And this will definitely be the future. I'm actually really, really happy that this is an Austrian company because the idea behind all that is really brilliant from my point of view. And that is just my opinion on the whole project. And I would be really, really happy if you guys could also support this, share this, tag Elon Musk on Twitter, do whatever you do, or yeah, um, just make a little bit of hype on this project because it really deserves to be heard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was just shortly my own words, my opinion. I think it's really cool. And if you think it's also cool, then please like this video. If you want to see more, especially topics on the biofuel, the battery, how they invented the whole engine, then make sure also to subscribe. And yeah, as always, guys, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.